the diagnosis and treatment of malaria in pregnancy. Green Top Guideline Number 54B, April 2010. Purpose and Scope For Initial Rapid Assessment and Management, see Appendix 1. Initial Rapid Diagnosis, Assessment, and Treatment of Malaria in Pregnancy Background Malaria is the most important parasitic infection in humans and is the tropical disease most commonly imported into the UK. Approximately 75% of cases are caused by Plasmodium falciparum and there is an average of 5 to 15 deaths a year, a mortality rate approximately 0.5 to 1%. Immigrants and second and third generation relatives returning home, assuming they are immune from malaria, are by far the highest risk group. A review of the burden of malaria in pregnancy estimated that about 1 in 4 women in sub-Saharan Africa in areas of stable transmission has malaria at the time of birth. Malaria in pregnancy is detrimental to the woman and her fetus and collective data demonstrate that the risk of adverse effects from untreated malaria in pregnancy outweigh those of treatment. The protozoan parasites Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malariae, and Plasmodium ovale, extremely rarely, Plasmodium nolesi, are transmitted by the bite of a sporozoid bearing female anopheline mosquito. After a period of pre erythrocytic development in the liver, the blood stage infection, which causes the disease, begins. Parasitic invasion of the erythrocyte consumes hemoglobin and alters the red cell membrane. This allows Plasmodium falciparum infected erythrocytes to cytoadhere or to stick inside the small blood vessels of brain, kidneys, and other affected organs. Cytoadherence and rositing, adherence of uninfected red blood cells, interfere with microcirculatory flow and metabolism of vital organs. The hallmark of falciparum malaria in pregnancy is parasites sequestered in the placenta. Sequestered parasites evade host defense mechanisms, splenic processing, and filtration. Sequestration is not known to occur in the benign malarias due to Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, and Plasmodium malariae. In pregnancy, the adverse effects of malaria infection result from the systemic infection, comparable to the effects of any severe febrile illness in pregnancy, maternal and fetal mortality, miscarriage, stillbirth, and premature birth. The parasitization itself, fetal growth restriction and low birth weight, maternal and fetal anemia, interaction with HIV, and susceptibility of the infant to malaria. Plasmodium falciparum causes greater morbidity, maternal and fetal, principally low birth weight and anemia, and mortality than non-falciparum infections, but there is mounting evidence that Plasmodium vivax is not as benign as had been previously thought. Response to anti-malarial treatment is multifactorial, but is associated with a degree of prior immunity acquired from repeated exposures in childhood and the background level of drug resistance. The higher the transmission of malaria, the greater the degree of prior immunity and the more likely the woman will respond favorably to a drug treatment. Definition of terms used in this guideline Severe and Complicated Malaria the severe signs of malaria are non-specific and other causes must be excluded before assigning the signs and symptoms to malaria. The parasitemia of severe malaria can be less than 2%. Pregnant women with 2% or more parasitized red blood cells are at higher risk of developing severe malaria and should be treated with a severe malaria protocol. Uncomplicated malaria Uncomplicated malaria in the UK is defined 
as fewer than 2% parasitize red blood cells in a woman with no signs of severity and no complicating features. Congenital malaria Congenital malaria in a very young infant or newborn results from the passage of parasites or infected red blood cells from the mother to the newborn while in utero or during delivery and not by the bite of the female anopheline mosquito. Box number one. Clinical and laboratory findings of severe or complicated malaria in adults. Reproduce with permission from the World Health Organization. Clinical manifestations. Prostration. Impaired consciousness. Respiratory distress. Acidotic breathing. Acute respiratory distress syndrome. Pulmonary edema, including radiological, multiple convulsions, circulatory collapse, shock, blood pressure equivalent to less than 90 over 60 mm of mercury, abnormal bleeding, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, jaundice, and hemoglobinuria without G6PD deficiency. Laboratory tests. Severe anemia, hemoglobin of less than 8.0 grams per deciliter, thrombocytopenia, hypoglycemia, less than 2.2 millimoles per liter, acidosis, pH of less than 7.3, renal impairment, oliguria, less than 0.4 milliliters per kilogram body weight per hour, or creatinine of greater than 265 micromoles per liter. Hyperlactatemia correlates with mortality. Hyperparasitemia equivalent to greater than 2% parasitized red blood cells. Algid malaria, gram-negative septicemia, and lumbar puncture to exclude meningitis. Asterisk mark are common features in pregnant women with severe or complicated malaria. Artemisinin combination therapy. Artemisinin combination therapy is a combination of artemisinin or one of its derivatives with an anti-malarial or anti-malarials of a different class. Resistance. Resistance is defined as the ability of a parasite strain to survive and multiply despite the administration and absorption of a medicine given in a doses equal to or higher than those usually recommended but within the tolerance of the subject. Diagnosis of malaria in pregnancy. Why is malaria diagnosis difficult? There are no specific symptoms or signs and malaria infection may present with a flu-like illness. A history of travel to a malaria endemic area should be sought in a pregnant woman with pyrexia of unknown origin. Suspicion of malaria requires prompt confirmation by malaria blood film, as there are no clinical algorithms that permit accurate diagnosis by signs and symptoms. In its early stages, the symptoms and signs of malaria can mimic influenza and other common viral infections. Box number two. Symptoms and signs of malaria. Symptoms. Fever, chills and sweats, headache, muscle pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, cough and general malaise. Signs. Jaundice, elevated temperature, perspiration, pallor, splenomegaly and respiratory distress. Misdiagnosis has been reported to occur when the leading symptoms are jaundice or respiratory and possibly gastrointestinal, certainly in children in nature. Misdiagnosis and delay of treatment are the most common reasons cited for death from malaria in Europe and the USA. For the non-falciparum malarias, the history of travel may be more than one year before the onset of symptoms, and for any woman who has taken prophylaxis, Compliance does not rule out the diagnosis of malaria. A history of travel to the tropics and the non-specific nature of the symptoms and signs will lead clinicians to consider investigating 
other travel-related diagnosis according to the region visited. However, for malaria diagnosis, a blood film is vital. How should malaria in pregnancy be diagnosed? Microscopic diagnosis allows species identification and estimation of parasitemia so that appropriate antimalarials can be prescribed. Rapid detection tests may miss low parasitemia, which is more likely in pregnant women, and rapid detection tests are relatively insensitive in Plasmodium vivax malaria. The diagnosis of malaria in pregnancy, as in non-pregnant patients, relies on microscopic examination, the current gold standard of thick and thin blood films for parasites, or the use of rapid diagnostic tests which detect specific parasite antigen or enzyme. Rapid diagnostic tests are less sensitive than malaria blood film. A positive rapid diagnostic test should be followed by microscopy to quantify the number of infected red blood cells, parasitemia, and to confirm the species and the stage of parasites. The rapid diagnostic test should not replace blood films, which should always be prepared, even if they cannot immediately be read. In a febrile patient, three negative malaria smears, 12 to 24 hours apart, rules out the diagnosis of malaria. There are occasions for suspicions to remain high, and expert advice should be sought in such circumstances. Women who have taken prophylaxis may have their parasitemia suppressed below the level of microscopic detection, total biomass 108 parasites, and details of prophylaxis, name, where it was bought, in case of fake drug, dosing, and adherence should be sought. Stop prophylaxis on admission to hospital. Pregnant women with a high background immune level may have negative peripheral blood tick films but parasites sequestered in the placenta, for example, a recently arrived woman from a high malaria endemic country with an unexplained anemia. Other important prognostic factors that should be reported on a peripheral blood smear result are the presence and count of mature tropozoites and schizons of Plasmodium falciparum, and finding malaria pigment in more than 5% of the polymorphonuclear leukocytes in the peripheral blood film. Is the severity of malaria a useful aid in managing the infection? Women with malaria in pregnancy should have the severity of their condition assessed and documented as an aid to management. The clinical condition is the most important indicator of severity and should be assessed promptly. The severity of malaria determines the treatment and predicts the case fatality rate. In uncomplicated malaria, fatality rates are low, approximately 0.1% for Plasmodium falciparum. In severe malaria, particularly in pregnancy, fatality rates are high, 15-20% to 20 in non-pregnant women compared with 50% in pregnancy. Brabin estimated mortality to be 2 to 10 times higher in pregnant women than in non-pregnant women in endemic areas. The non-falciparum species are rarely fatal, but cautions should still be observed. Once the disease has been classified as severe or complicated or uncomplicated malaria, prompt treatment should be instituted. How is malaria infection treated during pregnancy? Treat malaria in pregnancy as an emergency. Admit pregnant women with uncomplicated malaria to hospital and pregnant women with severe and complicated malaria to an intensive care unit. Intravenous artesunate is a treatment of choice for severe falciparum malaria. Use intravenous quinine if artesunate is not available. Use quinine and clindamycin to treat uncomplicated Plasmodium falciparum or mix such as Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax. Use chloroquine to treat Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, or Plasmodium malariae. Primaquine should not be used in pregnancy. Seek advice from infectious diseases specialists 
especially for severe and recurrent cases. Do not persist with oral therapy if vomiting is persistent. Treat the fever with antipyretics. Screen women with malaria for anemia and treat appropriately. Write a management plan for follow-up to ensure detection of relapse. Drug treatment. Delay in diagnosis and treatment is associated with death from severe malaria. Table number 1. UK Treatment Guidelines in Pregnancy. Who should prescribe treatment for malaria infection in pregnancy? In the UK, treatment prescription is limited to physicians. Treatment in pregnancy, particularly of severe and recurrent malaria, is best given with expert advice. Where should treatment of uncomplicated malaria infection take place? It is advisable to hospitalize all pregnant women with plasmodium falciparum as the clinical condition can deteriorate rapidly. Blood films are usually monitored every 24 hours, but clinical deterioration is an indication for a repeat blood film. The seven-day course of quinine has significant adverse effects, principally syncytism, which includes tinnitus, headache, nausea, diarrhea, altered auditory acuity, and blurred vision. This can lead to non-compliance, which frequently leads to failure. For this reason, hospitalization can be useful as compliance with each dose of quinine and clindamycin can be observed, and this may lead to improved cure rates. While non-falciparum malaria can be managed on an outpatient basis, admission ensures compliance and any risk of vomiting or rapid deterioration is minimized, and allows time for planning post-treatment prophylaxis. What happens if the patient vomits? Vomiting is a symptom of malaria and a known adverse effect of quinine. It is associated with anti-malarial treatment failure. If the patient vomits, use an anti-emetic. There are no studies of their efficacy in malaria, but metoclopramide is considered safe even in the first trimester. After the antiemetic has had time to take effect, repeat the dose. Repeat vomiting after antiemetic is an indication for parenteral therapy.